This is the second part of the tutorial on how to make a wrapper package in Laravel. If you haven't seen the first, just make sure you check it out. The link is below. We're continuing where we left it off and we're going to migrate all the files we created into a standalone package. But before that, we should remove our API keys from the service provider and place it in a new config file. Create a new file in the config folder. We should call this um, buckherd.php. It only has to return an array, so let's define that. And that array should contain an API key. Uh, let me copy my API key. Um, yep, that's it. Paste. We can remove this API key variable here. And we're going to use the config file, which is in config, buckherd, and the API key. Just remove this use. And that's it. It's working. The next step is to get all these files migrated into a package. For that, create an empty directory. I'm going to put this in my code folder and call it Laravel Buckherd. Just run Composer in it to set up our JSON file. Edit the package name if it is necessary. This is a Laravel 5 wrapper for Buckherd API. I'm going to skip the author. The minimum stability is dev. I'll skip this. License is MIT. No, I don't want any of that. Okay, cool. Have a quick look at our JSON file, and it is looking good. We should create a source folder here. And inside of that folder, I will create the config and onward. I'm going to move the backer.php config file over to this directory. Let's go into that folder, and I'm going to make a backer folder here. And we can move the Buckhead service provider from our application. After that, I'll create a facade folder and move the facade here. Oh, wrong directory. Let's move it to facades. Okay, I'm going to open up Sublime and just open up a new window. And, and I'm going to add this new project folder into Sublime. So this is how our folder structure should look like. And you can see that the files are there. We still have a couple of things to do with this package. We can start by fixing the namespaces. So the service provider namespace should be onward and backward. And the namespace for the facade should be onward backward and facades. Next, there are a couple of files that are still missing that we should create. One of them is the readme file for GitHub. I'm just going to put readme here, save it. The other file is the license file. Uh, and I'm just going to put the simple MIT license here. The next file is the gitignore file, which is for GitHub, obviously. Let's just ignore the vendor directory. The following file is phpunit.xml. Now, there is a lot of information within this file, but we will need this in order for phpunit to run the tests in the test directory. By the way, I just realized that there is no test directory, so let's go ahead and create that. Okay, so we should have a look at our composer.json file because bits and pieces are still missing. Let's define our keywords. These will be Laravel, Buckyard, and Buck Trucking. And we are going to set up a PSR for autoloading for our source directory. The namespace will be onward and Buckyard. And and this is the path to the source directory. And I should really add myself as an author. 
my name and email. Let's save it. So because we are using the service provider in the facade class from Laravel, we will have to pull in the support package from Illuminate. Let's require this with Composer. Once this is done, we should require PHP units into our dev dependencies. We'll be using the Laravel Testbench package in order to test our service provider and facade implementations. So we should require this package as well. Don't forget, it is only for development. We should also install the Buckhead API package. Why don't we go ahead and set up our test cases? We'll start by creating a new abstract class, which we will extend later on. This will be called abstract test case and only going to contain two methods. Let me set up the namespace here and do some commenting. Uh, and this class will extend the abstract package test case. And don't forget to include this class at the top. The first function is the get service provider class, which will return the fully qualified name of our service provider. I'll just leave a command here. And the second method is the set API key, which we will need in order to build the Buckhart class. That's it. Just leave a command and we're done. Next, a test case for our service provider. This class is going to extend our abstract class and only have one test method. It will be a simple class. Just don't forget the commands. Test Buckhart client is injectable. This is a test that checks if the Buckhart client is injectable. And don't forget to use the service provider trait. And of course, include at the top. Let's do the same for our facade class as well. Create the directory and a new file. Let's call it buckhurttest.php. Let me set up the namespace. So this class also extends our abstract class. And we will need to define a couple of methods here. The first one is the get facade accessor, which will return the string buckhurt. The second is the get facade class, which will return the fully qualified name of the Buckhurt facade. The third is the get facade root, which will return the fully qualified name of the Buckhurt client. Okay, I'm sorry, these methods should be protected. And of course, use the facade trait. and just fix the includes at the top. I think we are done here. Yep. Um, I'm sure that we will have to do some tweaks here and there, but let's run PHP unit and it will tell us what to fix. Okay. Hmm. I think there is something wrong in our service provider test file. Oh, it's just a typo. So that worked, but we have a couple of errors and Class does not exist. I'm guessing that we have some issue with our composer file. Let's open it. Oh yeah, there is no auto loading for the tests. We can add that easily. And I can see that we are pointing to the wrong directory here. Let's regenerate the files and run PHP unit. Yes. Okay, we still have some errors, but we are getting there. I know that this fails because we didn't define an alias for the Buckhurt client. This should be done in a service provider. Let's do this in the register method. So the name of the alias is Buckhurt, and this is the fully qualified name. While we're here, we can also make the package to publish our configuration file for Laravel. 
We need a source variable and this will contain the path to our config file. Then we want to check if the application is Laravel and running in the console. If it is, then we want to publish this file. If, however, it is a Lumen application, just include the config. This way the package will work with both Laravel and Lumen. We should also merge the source file with the main configuration file at the end. And then we can run PHP init as well. And I think something is missing. Let me check that quickly. Oh, first of all, we should return an array here. And second, we should return the fully qualified name as well. Check the service provider test, the abstract test case. Oh yeah, there's a typo. Now let's go back and run PHP in it. And I think we are now here. Let's go ahead and publish our package on GitHub. The name will be Laravel Buckard. And the description will be Laravel file wrapper for Buckard API. And just submit it. Now I'm going to use these two commands here. Let's go back to our terminal, initialize the git repo, and let's add everything. And this will be our initial commit. Add the remote and push everything. If you just do a refresh, you will see that everything is on GitHub now. Now, I want to publish this to packages as well. In order to do that, we'll have to submit the repository URL. Okay, so now there is a notification that our package does not auto-update when I push something to GitHub. Let's fix that. Head over to GitHub, Settings, Webhooks, and let's add the package's service. All you have to do is fill in your username and token. You can obtain the token from packages.com under your profile. Let's add the service and we can go ahead and test it as well, just to hook it up with packages. We are finally ready to test this package in our example application. Go back to your terminal and use Composer to download our package. I know what this is. We have to set the minimum stability level in our JSON file in order to use this package. I'm going to update this package later and release a stable version, but we're not going to cover that in this video. If you run Composer now, we shouldn't get any errors. That's okay. All we have to do is edit our configuration file because we are including the old service provider. So open up app.php and this should be onward and backward. Let's update our facade as well. So onward and backward. Run PHP artisan optimize just to make sure everything is okay. If we go ahead and test this in our browser, this should be working fine. This time, however, it uses our package from packages. Of course, it is not a requirement to make such a Laravel specific package, and you can just create a simple service provider as we did in our first video. However, I think such packages definitely make the developer's life easier, and it is very good for the Laravel community. If you like this tutorial, just give a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. You can also leave your comments if you have any questions, or an idea what tutorial should I make next. Thanks!